bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of The Hard Things About Hard Things, Building a Business When There Are No Easy Answers by Ben Horowitz. A lot of people talk about how great it is to start a business, but only Ben Horowitz is brutally honest about how hard it is to run one. In Hard Things About Hard Things, Ben Horowitz, co-founder of Anderson Horowitz and one of Silicon Valley's most respected and experienced entrepreneurs, draws on his own story of founding, running, selling, buying, managing, and investing in technology companies to offer essential advice and practical wisdom for navigating the toughest problems business schools don't cover. His blog has garnered a devoted following of millions of readers who have come to rely on him to help them run their businesses. A lifelong rap fan, Horror Wits amplifies business lessons with the lyrics from his favorite songs and tells it straight from everything from firing friends to poaching competitors, from cultivating and sustaining a CEO mentality to knowing the right time to cash in. His advice is grounded in anecdotes from his own hard-earned rise, from co-founded the early cloud service provider Loud Cloud to building the phenomenally successful Anderson Horowitz venture capital firm, both which fellow tech superstar Mark Anderson, inventor of Mosaic, the internet's first popular web browser. There is no Polish victory lap. He analyzes issues with no easy answers through his trials, including demoting or firing a loyal friend, whether you should incorporate titles and promotions and how to handle them. If it's okay to hire people from your friend's company, how to manage your own psychology while the whole company is relying on you, what to do when smart people are bad employees, why Anderson Horowitz prefers founder CEOs and how to become one, whether you should sell your company and how to do it, filed with Horowitz's trademark humor and straight talk, and drawing from his personal and often humbling experience. The Hard Things About Hard Things is invaluable for veteran entrepreneurs as well as those aspiring to their own new ventures. Introduction over, on with the book summaries. Key ideas. There's no recipe or formula for dealing with the complex hard things. Being scared did not mean you were gutless. What you do matters and will determine whether you'll be a hero or a coward. Do not judge things by the surfaces. Until you make a great effort to get to know someone or something, you don't know anything. Leadership is about getting someone else to follow you, even if only through curiosity. Looking at the world through such different prisms and social groups helped him separate the facts from perceptions. Learn to look for alternative narratives and explanations coming from radically different perspectives to inform your outlook. What is cheap? Flowers. What is expensive? Divorce. When you're part of a family or a group, thinking about yourself first can get you in trouble. Some business relationships become too tense to tolerate or not tense enough to become productive after a while. In raising money privately, look for a market of one. You only need one investor to say yes, so it's best to ignore the other 30 who say no. In startups, you only experience two emotions, euphoria and terror. Lack of sleep amplifies both. Bill Campbell, the key to his success is no matter where he goes, He's everyone's favorite person. You need two kinds of friends in your life. Ones you can call when something good happens and you need someone to be excited for you. The other is the kind of person you call when things go horribly wrong. If you're going to eat shit, don't nibble. Things are always darkest before they go completely black. Treat the people leaving fairly so that the people staying will have the same trust in you. What are you not doing? Usually what you're not focusing on is what you should be. Many times conventional wisdom has nothing to do with the truth. Lesson. Startup CEOs should not play the odds. When you are building a company, you must believe there is an answer. You cannot pay attention to the odds of finding it. There is no secret to being a successful CEO, but if there is one skill that stands out, It is that the ability to focus and make the best move when there are no good moves. It's in the moments when you feel most like hiding or dying that you can make the biggest difference as a CEO. First principle in Bushido, keep death in the mind 
at all times. Life is a struggle, Karl Marx. The struggle causes failure, especially if you're weak. Most people aren't strong enough. The struggle is where greatness comes from. Don't put it all on your shoulders. The burden will hurt hardest to whoever is most responsible. But share every burden you can. Get the maximum number of brains on the problem. Get the maximum number of brains on the problem. There's always a move. Running a business is complex, like 3D chess. In the technology world, tomorrow looks like nothing today. Everyone makes mistakes. CEOs make thousands of mistakes. Giving yourself an F doesn't help. If you want to be great, this is a challenge. If you didn't want to be great, you should never have started a company. CEOs should tell it like it is. Never buy overly optimistic. Employees can handle loss much better because they aren't married to the company. Give the problem to people who can fix it, and you would almost be personally motivated and excited to solve it. If something goes wrong, people need to know why so that they can fix the problem together. Three lessons why being transparent about your company makes sense. Trust. Without trust, communication breaks. The required amount of communication is inversely proportional to the level of trust. The more brains working on hard problems, the better. A brain, no matter how big, cannot solve a problem it doesn't know about. A good culture is like IP routing protocol. Bad news travels fast. Good news travels slow. Bad company culture discourages spread of bad news. Discussing problems openly and freely allows for quick solutions. In laying people off, don't delay. Be clear to the reason. Admit to the failure. Managers should lay off. Explain what happened. Clear and definitive. Firing an executive. Root cause analysis. Figure out why you hired the wrong person for the company. Hiring for scale too soon. Requalifying for the same job, leaving a failing leader in their place. Preserve reputation of fired executive. Most likely a team failure, so best to portray that way. Demoting a loyal friend. Confucius approach. The good of the individual must be sacrificed for the good of the whole. Finding a silver bullet versus many lead bullets. No avoiding the problem. Have to go straight through. Sometimes you have to fight. Take care of the people, products, and profits in that order. Hire for strength rather than lack of weakness. Be clear on what you want them to do and also why. In good organizations, people can focus on their work and they have the confidence if they do good work, it will benefit both the company and themselves. Being a good company is an end in itself. The manager should be doing the training for his employees himself. In building a technology company, people are the most important asset. Training is one of the highest leverage activities a manager can perform. Important to clearly set expectations when training the employee. One reason people quit, they hate their manager. They are appalled by the lack of guidance, career development and feedback. They weren't learning anything. Start with functional training, the knowledge and skill needed to do the job, as well as expectations. Ask managers and the highest level performers to help train. This will help you build positive company culture. Take your best people and encourage them to share and teach their most developed skills. Training must be mandatory. Two types of training are functional and management training, which should be easily implemented. Two ways for a manager to improve output of an employee, motivation and training. No better time investment that will improve productivity in your company than developing a training program. The best product managers take full responsibility for the product from the top down. The job of a big company executive is very different from a small company executive. Big company execs tend to be interruption driven. Small company execs, nothing happens until they make it happen. Screen in the interview process, take integration as seriously as interviewing. Time running versus time creating. As a great general manager, you must hire 
and manage people who are far more competent at their jobs than you would be. How to hire someone good, know what you want, act in functional roles, have clear expectations for the first 30 days, write what strengths you want and what weaknesses you're willing to tolerate. Will they be effective? Who do you need support from? Set metrics that match your priorities. Supplement a great product vision with strong disciplines around the metrics. Anything you measure creates a set of employee behaviors. Anything you measure creates a set of employee behaviors. Management debt is when you make a quick and expedient decision that it is short term but has an expensive long term consequence. Companies execute well when everyone's on the same page and everyone is constantly improving. Good CEOs will make the tough decisions and quickly because they're paid the management debt before. Good HR organizations can't create a great company culture, but they can tell you when you and your managers aren't getting the job done. The best way to approach management QA is through the lens of the employee life cycle from hire to retire. Minimizing politics always starts with the CEO. Politics, people advancing their careers by means other than merit and contribution. Giving people a raise when asked and not by merit causes others to follow suit. Hiring people with the right kind of ambition. Build strict processes for potentially political issues and do not deviate. Nothing motivates a great employee more than a mission that's so important it supersedes everyone's personal ambition. When interviewing candidates, watch for small distinctions that indicate whether they view the world through the me prism or the team prism. Job title. Employees want them, and eventually people need to know who is who to get their work done. The Peter Principle. People will be promoted in a hierarchy as long as they perform their job duties competently. They will keep being promoted until they become incompetent at their threshold level. The law of crappy people. For any title in a large organization, the talent on that level will eventually convert to the crappiest person with the title. Mark Anderson, titles are the cheapest things people ask for from their company. And if it makes them feel better, it will cost nothing to outbid other companies in the recruiting process. Mark Zuckerberg, D-levels, titles, process in order to increase fairness and boost morale. As an organization grows, it's important to provide organizational clarity whenever possible. Being an effective employee isn't just about intelligence. It's also about working hard, reliability, and working well with the team. You can only hold the bus for one person. Sometimes you have to mitigate the negative consequences of a star player as long as they are a positive contribution to the team. Bringing on someone who has the right experience at the right time can help you radically speed up your time to success. The right reasons to hire a senior person is to acquire knowledge and experience in a specific area. Ask yourself, do I value external or internal knowledge more for this position? This will help you determine whether to go for experience or youth. Managing senior people. Will they bring their own habits and culture from their old company? Will they work the system? How do you keep them accountable? Demand and expect cultural compliance. Set a high and clear standard for performance. Use standards based on other high performers in their field. Performance. Results against objectives. Management. Innovation. Hitting goals, but not ignoring future. Working with peers. One-on-ones. Well-designed communication architecture. The key to a successful one-on-one meeting is understanding that it is the employee's meeting, not the manager's. The primary thing that any tech company must do is build a product that is at least 10x better at doing something than the current prevailing way of doing that thing. The secret thing is to take the market before someone else does. Culture does not make your company. Culture matters to the extent that it can help you achieve the above goals, preserve your key values, and helps performance in the future. It makes people want to work at your company yourself included. 
Culture is designed in a way of looking that distinguishes you from your competitors, helps you identify employees that fit with your mission. If you want to build an important company, you'll have to learn the black art of scaling. Find a mentor and find some experienced, been there, done that, executives who already know how to scale. The challenge is to grow, but degrade as slowly as possible. Startup employees start as the jack of all trades, but scaling requires specialization. Organizational design. Split up a company by function or by mission. Figure out what needs to be communicated. List the most important knowledge and who needs to have it. Figure out what needs to be decided and organize accordingly. Prioritize the most important communication and decision paths. Identify issues and the processes to resolve them. A process is a formal, well-structured communication vehicle. Engineer accountability into the process system. When evaluating an employee, base it off their ability to perform at current scale, not future scale. Investing, encourage, and determination is an easy investment. The most important thing learned as an entrepreneur was to focus on what you need to get right and stop worrying about all the things you did wrong or might do wrong. Most difficult skill to learn as a CEO was the ability to manage his own psychology. Someone doesn't have to become a CEO unless they have a high sense of purpose and cares deeply about the work they do. In addition, they must be accomplished enough or smart enough that people will want to work for them. Everyone learns how to be a CEO by being a CEO. There is no job that fully trains or prepares you. Everything that goes wrong is the CEO's fault, especially founder CEOs as there is no one else to blame. The key is to not get married to the position or the dark narratives of your company. If you don't like choosing between horrible and catechism, don't become a CEO. WFIO equals we're fucked. It's over. Every company goes through two to five of these. Make friends and talk to people who have been through similar challenging situations. Focus on the road, not the wall. Focus on the road, not the wall. Don't punk out or quit. Great CEOs face the pain and deal with it. There's little difference between a hero and a coward except what they do despite the fear. Two key characteristics they look for in entrepreneurs. Brilliance and courage. Courage to make the right decision. Courage, like character, can be developed. In life, many decisions where you'll choose between easy crowd, wrong decision, and hard, lonely, right decision. As a CEO, consequences of these decisions are magnified 1,000 times. Two core skills for running an organization. Knowing what to do and getting the company to do what you know. There are two types of managers. Number one, those who like setting the direction of the company. And number two, those who like making the companies perform at the highest level. You need both characteristics to be a great CEO, but those who lean towards one can learn the skills of the other. The primary purpose of a company's organizational structure is for decision-making efficiency. Most important attribute to be a great CEO, leadership. The measure of a quality of a leader, the quantity of quality, and diversity of people who want to follow her. Three traits of what makes people want to follow a leader. Number one, ability to articulate the vision, interesting, dynamic, compelling, Steve Jobs attribute. Number two, the right kind of ambition. Truly great leaders create an environment where the employees feel the CEO cares more about the employee than herself. Bill Campbell attribute. Number three, the ability to achieve the vision, anti-grove attribute, peacetime and wartime CEOs, hard to be both, peacetime, a company has a large advantage over its competitors and core market is growing, they can be focused on expanding their market and reinforcing the company's strengths, a wartime equals a company is fending off an immediate existential threat. Peacetime and wartime tactics can be extremely effective when employed at the right times. Most management books are written about peacetime management. It's hard, but not impossible, to develop skill sets of both. 
Being a CEO is an unnatural job and requires learning how to do things the unnatural way. Giving feedback as foundational building blocks, the critique sandwich. Be authentic and come from the right place, such as wanting employees to succeed. Stylistically, your tone should match the employee's personality. Be direct, but not mean. Feedback is a dialogue, not a monologue. The goal should be to open the discussion because they should have more data about their position than you. As a CEO, you should have an opinion on everything. Key questions they ask regarding CEO and a company. Number one, does the CEO know what to do? Number two, can the CEO get the company to do what she knows? And number three, did the CEO achieve the desired results against an appropriate set of objectives? Some employees make product, others make sales. A CEO makes decisions. Therefore, a CEO can be most accurately measured by the speed and quality of those decisions. Great decisions are made by CEOs who display an elite mixture of intelligence, logic, and courage. You must systematically and continually make acquired knowledge in the company's day-to-day activities. Executing well requires a broad set of operational skills. Great CEOs constantly assess whether they're building the best team. Accountability versus creativity paradox. Holding people accountable for their deadlines next to encouraging people for solving hard problems and having the courage to identify them. Senior people should be able to forecast their results more accurately than junior people. It's better to believe people have good intentions, are smart, intelligent, and creative, especially with your own employees. You owe it to your people, your employees, and all the people that report to your managers and executives to hold the executives to a high standard. Selling your company rule of thumb. If you are very early on in a very large market and you have a very good chance of being number one in that market, then you should stand alone. Most important lesson in entrepreneurship. Embrace the struggle. Embrace the struggle. Embrace your weirdness, your background, your instinct. If the keys are not in there, they do not exist. That's wrapping this book summary. The hard things about hard things. If you want a copy of the PDF, click the link below to download the PDF. We will also have our top 500 book summaries packaged together in one massive 15 volume PDF and MP3 download. So if you want to grab this bundle box set, click the link below to download this. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and check us out at bestbookbits.com. Thanks for watching and listening. I hope you got something from this. The hard things about hard things go out there. Do hard things. They become easy. Trust me. Take care. Bye-bye now.